Hey, let's watch Frank Turek redefine atheism so he can make some silly claims about his imaginary friend and not actually answer a direct question. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> what else is new, right? This time out, I look at another question from Frank Turek's live shows where he gets a question about atheism, ignores it, redefines his terms, and then pretends that he has the slightest clue what he's talking about. You know, typical Turek. Because this seems to be Religious Apologetics 101. Crazy claims, presented with no evidence, ignoring reality, and then pretending otherwise. And nobody makes a fool of himself better than Frank Turek. So off we go. And just to clarify, atheism is not a, it, it's a, it's an awe, right? It's, it's a negation of a claim. It's not saying there is no God, it's saying I'm not convinced of it. Much okay, like that's fine. Now, I'm going to stop here because Frank already said that's fine. But how much do you want to bet that he'll now say that it isn't fine, that that's not what atheism is? because he has to maintain that adversarial relationship with atheists. Let's see where he goes. Okay, just to clarify. Well, well hang, hang, hang on one sec about that. You're basically saying that atheists lack a belief in God, right? Well, yes. The overwhelming majority of atheists that I've ever met lack a belief in gods. There are only a very tiny minority, again in my personal experience, that say that there are no gods of any kind, period, as a declarative belief. You might find some that find specific gods that are self-contradictory and therefore so completely irrational that an intelligent person would have to declare that those particular gods have to be non-existent. But to just state that all gods everywhere do not exist? That's a ridiculously tiny minority. Not con I mean, it, 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 who you ask, right? There's the, there's the classical thing that you have Agnes... Uh, Theism, atheism, agnosticism. Right. That's the classical thing. Yeah. I'd put it more into theism, atheism, gnosticism, agnosticism. One is knowing, one is belief. And that's true. Atheism and theism address belief. Do you believe in any god or do you not? And if you believe in any god of any kind, you are a theist. If you do not, for any reason, you are an atheist. Agnosticism and Gnosticism addresses knowledge, whether the availability of knowledge in gods or the actual possession of knowledge about gods, and these are two entirely different questions. Everyone is either an atheist or a theist, and an agnostic or a Gnostic. That's how this works, but I'm sure Frank will get it all wrong. All right, let, me, let me just ask you a question about that, because here, there are three possibilities. You say God does exist, you say he doesn't exist, or you say you're not sure. Which one of those are you closest to? And that's wrong, just as we expected him to be. I don't say that gods don't exist, except in the prior example of things so absurdly self-contradictory that they cannot possibly exist in the real world. But I haven't been convinced by theists who have the burden of proof that the gods that they believe in have any reality whatsoever. The same is true of Bigfoot and aliens and unicorns. I have no reason to take any of those claims seriously. And because I don't, I do not believe. I would say I'm not sure. Okay, you're, a, you're an agnostic then. You're not well, an atheist. Well, no. I, th see, if you're theistic, the claim there is that they are God or gods. If you're not convinced of it, you don't know. So you would be, if you're not sure, say the specific one, like say Mott or... Isis, or you know, or Thor, or so on and so on. Okay, right? that would be a that would be a the, that would be a theistic claim for. Let's say I'm theistic in the way of I think Thor exists. Pal, you're trying to be reasonable to Frank Turek, and that never turns out well because basic linguistics proves him wrong. Theism is the belief in a god or gods. If you do not believe in a god or gods, you are a non-theist an atheist. The A prefix gives it away. But Frank isn't going to play along, is he? All right, yeah, but here's, here's the difference. The God of the, of the Bible is not like, and we might say the God of Islam too, is not like superheroes. Except in the sense that there's no reason to think they're actually real, I guess. 
They're, they're not created beings inside the universe like Thor or Ra or, or, uh, or Zeus. Those are beings, mythical beings, that are, that are created beings inside the universe. What we're saying when we talk about God is we're talking about a spaceless, timeless, self-existing, immaterial source and sustainer of all things. Meaning shit that you just made up. Because there are tons of other gods that are likewise creator gods that created everything, at least according to their mythologies, and you don't take any of that seriously. So my question is, why should I take your irrational claims seriously when you reject everybody else's irrational claims? Everyone thinks their own theological shit doesn't stink, but it all smells just the same. So, I, we're... We're not competing with Zeus and Thor. Only because Zeus and Thor don't have the same kind of fan club your imaginary friend does. But in another time and in another place, you absolutely would be. And depending on where and when you were, they'd be winning. But they're all equally unsupported and unsupportable, so none of them ought to be believed in. We, we can make our evaluations on whether those beings exist inside the universe regardless of our beliefs about God, the theistic God. But why would you? Because you're just arbitrarily picking this one particular imaginary God figure, and you're trying to say that it's special based on your own emotional wishes and dreams that it should be. But that doesn't mean that it actually is, because all of the characteristics that you've arbitrarily assigned to said deity can't be demonstrated to be actually applicable. And this is something I've said before, that none of the gods, not the Christian god, not Zeus or Thor or Krishna, none of the gods can be shown to have any of the characteristics that their followers have stapled onto them. And if your description of your god can't be validated in any way, why should I take it seriously? It's like some guy who says he's got an invisible, intangible, fire-breathing dragon in his garage, and he expects me to take his claim seriously. Why would I? Because there's no evidence to think that any of his arguments are credible. If he's invisible and intangible, how does he know that he's real in the first place? How does he know that he breathes fire? How has he tested any of his assertions to see if they hold water? And if they don't, why should I, who has to rely on his claims, believe any of it. And if you've given me no reason to believe it, then it doesn't matter what absurd characteristics you cover it in, it's just all empty claims that nobody should accept. And that's the problem with the religious. That's all they've got. And that's why they fail.